This is Janice Wilson Hughes. We're here in my Evolution Stoneware Pottery Studio for another segment on circular flutes. So this is one of the first two prototypes that I made about a year and a half ago. And this one has this sound bell on it that's attached to this circular hollow ring. The first thing that you'll need to do is throw a hollow ring on the wheel. And I've got videos showing how to do that. You'll also want to throw some sound bells. It's a good idea to make a couple or more than you think you'll need so that you can decide which one you like best to attach to your ring. So I also have a video on how to throw your own little sound bell. That's just what I call it. It's not necessary to have the sound bell. You can make a circular flute without it and it will play just fine. But it's a cool embellishment that you can do and I'll go ahead and show you how to do it. You'll need to go to your wheel and throw a hollow ring like this a donut, a toroid, a double walled ring, whatever you'd like to call it. So throw one and trim one and let it get to, I would recommend hard leather hard or at least medium leather hard. The particular ring that I'm working with here is about six and a half inches on outer diameter. by a little over four inches on the inner diameter. And it's about an inch and a quarter high or thick. Your donut doesn't need to be the same size. I'm just giving you that info for reference. Earlier I threw several sound bells off the hump and I've selected one that I'm going to go ahead and attach to the ring that I have here. So the first thing that I want to do is just visually check out my ring, see if there are any sort of rough areas, and that might be a good place to go ahead and attach your sound bell so you'll have really nice, pretty smooth areas for the rest of your flute. So I have a kind of an ugly spot here, and that's where I'll attach my sound bell. I'm going to hold this on there just sort of mark where it is. I'm also going to use my needle tool and trace the inside where the inner hole is. Whoa! Almost lost the needle. So I kind of have a circle here for where I want to cut out here to add my sound hole. You could use a fettling knife. I happen to have my craft knife here, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. Just cut right in. Well, one thing I will tell you, if you throw your ring and let it set up to a hard leather heart, it's a really good idea to make a little needle hole in it. Once it gets to about a soft leather hard, because It'll start shrinking and the air pressure will build up inside and you'll want to leave a little air hole to let that breathe. Okay. Now in the segment that I made that shows how to make a circular flute without a sound bell, you may notice if you compare the two that there's going to be a difference in the pitch once you add the sound bell. And you could experiment over time with how wide and how long you make your sound bell and see how that changes the pitch of your instrument. But that's pretty good. I'm just going to go ahead and score around here. I could make that hole a little bigger, but I'm not going to. 
Just going to go with it. Score this nicely. Score this. You'll notice that my sound bell here is uh, at a softer stage. It's not at hard leather hard. If it was, it would be a little difficult to attach with the curvature. Oh, and here's a tip. It's a good idea to keep track of which side was the top and which side was the bottom on your ring when you threw it because on the top where you join the two walls together, you may have a weird thick spot where the two overlap. And that's probably not the side that you want to put your finger holes for changing notes on. So if you're cutting into it to add your uh, sound bell, you can peek inside and see which side was the top. And I can see in here, I'm not sure if it'll actually show up in the camera, I don't think it will, that this was the top. And it's not really that rough, but now I know and I might even just make a little, a little mark so I know that this was the bottom. Okay, so go ahead and add water. You could use slip. You could use magic water or joining slip. Whatever you'd like. Add in some water there. Let's put this on there, get it centered and work this onto the flute. You'll want to take a look up and down and kind of make sure you've got this on there straight. And with it pressed on, you can blend the clay on to get a very nice joint. Oops. Don't do that. That was unawesome. Ew. It's got dog hair all over it now. I'll throw that part away and I will reclaim this part. I had a little accident while I was adding my sound bell the first time. So I now have a different sound bell that I'm going to be adding on here. Now the level that you want to blend the two pieces together is up to you. I'm going to make this nice and smooth. It's purely an aesthetic choice for you to make. Alright! Yay! Now we have a sound bell on and it didn't take long at all. So you do want to make sure that it's lined up this way. It's not like cocked off to the side. I mean, it could be. It would still make sound and actually that might look pretty cool. But if you want to be able to fire it in the kiln with the whole outside glazed and standing up, you'll need the bell to be in axis with your ring. Okay, I made the mark on what was originally the bottom when I threw this. So I'm going to have that facing up toward me and I'm going to go ahead and cut a sound hole or a blow hole. Near as I can tell, this whole cutter is about 5 sixteenths. <laughs> it's just one that I happen to have in my arsenal. I'm going to use it to make the blow hole. You want to put the blow hole... I'm going to choose to put it directly in line with my sound bow. And I'm going to put it right on top of the instrument. And I want a nice clean cut straight down with hard edges. So 
Try not to wiggle this back and forth in there as you're making your cut and leave those edges nice and sharp because that's what allows you to make note when you blow into it. So I'm just doing this by eye. You could get more exacting with how you line up where the hole is with your sound bill. So I'm pushing that hole cutter in, twisting, and removing a plug of clay. Now, we have a little hole here. Let's see if we can play a note. So you want to hold this up, nestle it right under your bottom lip, kind of between your bottom lip and your chin, and just kind of blow like that. You might need to rotate it a little bit as you're blowing to see where it'll make sound, what angle it needs to be. So you might notice that I have my phone going over here with my Carl Tune app going. This app listens to what note is being played and it tells you what that note is. So let's go ahead and tune this. If you don't want to tune it, you can just make a few little small finger holes and fire it and have fun and be happy with that. I'll go ahead and show you how to tune it. So when I blow into this, it's going to make a note. I'm going to look at my screen here and it'll tell me what that note is. G sharp. I think that maybe I'll make my hole a little bit bigger so that my bass note here or my my key will be in A. So I want to enlarge my blow hole until I get to an A. I'm going to use my craft knife to do that. And I want to continue to make sure that I have hard edges on this hole. It's a good idea not to go make too drastic of a change in the hole size before you test. Alright, nailed it! <laughs> So this is my blow hole now. A will be the key and that will be my lowest note. I'm going to hold this up in my hands and kind of see where it feels good for my fingers to be around the ring when I hold it up to my face. So it will probably be a little bit past halfway around, so a little bit farther down toward the sound bell. is about comfortable for me. So I'm going to lay this down and just use my fingernails to kind of make a mark where each of my fingers is. You could get, you know, really exacting with this. I'm going to go pretty quick with it. So hopefully you can see these little half moon indentions where I stuck my fingernails in there. So let's do our first note. Let's start with a small hole. I'm going to use my Kemper multi-drill tool. Love this little guy. These cost about $4 and are very useful in the studio. I'm going to make my first note be one that I play with the bottom finger of my right hand. You can do it from your left hand. You can do whatever you want. I'm going to stick this in here at where I made the mark for that finger and just twist. 
And I now have a very wee little small hole here that's beveled on the top. And we'll try to see what happens here. So that little tiny hole took us up to A sharp. I have a cheat sheet over here that shows me pentatonic scales for each key. We're going to have A and then B. So our note here was A sharp, so we're going to need to make this hole bigger. So let's try enlarging this again with our Kemper tool. I'm going to impale it a little farther in there, spin it around, and clean this out just a little bit with my needle tool. Let's see what note we have now. We're getting closer to B. I love about this multi-drill tool is that it can give you a nice little bevel around the top of your hole which is really nice for the pad of your finger to just nest right on there. So let's do our next note. I'm going to go up one hand in the order so do 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 and then up the other hand do do so I want to do the middle finger of my right hand for my next note. Again, you could do your fingering kind of however you want. You could go like right, left, right, left, right. It doesn't really matter. It will affect the size of your holes and a bunch of stuff like that. But So, A, B, C sharp. For this one, I'm going to go ahead and start with a hole cutter. Stick it straight in, twist, pull it out. If you get clay in there, you can shake it out. Shake it up, shake it up. Ah, ah. So the whole cutter that I just used is 3 sixteenths. took us up to C, but I really want to be at C sharp for this key. bevel this outside edge just a little bit. Don't want to change the inside diameter of this hole, like the part that's down in there. I'm just trying to get the very top edge here. You could also come in with like a wet sponge or something to soften this top edge. Just make it a little easier for your finger to nestle down in there and really seal the hole off. Okay. Our next note is E, and that's a big jump, so it's probably going to need to be a pretty big hole. Hopefully, we'll be able to pull that off. I think I'm going to be wild and crazy. Go ahead and make a pretty big cut with this hole cutter. Yeah, 
Yeah, see, that only took us to D. I'm a little concerned about how big this hole is going to need to be. Doesn't seem to be changing at all. Don't really know what to say about that. Well, I think I'm going to hop over to the other side and see if I can make another hole over there that combined with this hole will get me to that E that I'm searching for. So let's start small. Okay, what got us the E? It's becoming a bit more difficult to get this to make sound. I'm gonna see if I can use my multi-drill tool here to bevel this hole for me. Nice. So let's see. D in our scale if we want to use it. Now we're looking for F sharp. Make another hole here. So the great news is I don't have to make it that much bigger, hopefully. Let me go ahead and start in here with my multi-drill tool. Oops. Try not to get your phones full of clay <laughs> while you're doing this project. too far but I don't think I'm going to try to adjust it. You could add a little bit of clay back in to make your hole smaller to make up for that. So our next note would be the octave A. I'm a little hesitant to believe that I'm going to be able to do that. So I think maybe I'll just stop. <laughs> it will go with a five hole. You could texture the outside of your flute. On my prototype ones, I added colored slip and on go to them to decorate them, and I didn't glaze them. But if you wanted to fire this standing up on the end of your bell, you could wax the end of your bell and glaze the outside of your flute. I would keep the glaze outside of all of the holes and just on the surface of the flute. You could also <laughs> You could also add some lugs of clay on the bottom as little feet. Then you could fire it on those feet. And then you can use those feet to feed a rope through 
to hang this around your neck or hang it on the wall when you're not playing it or that kind of thing. So those are just some ideas of some little embellishments that you could do to your flute. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this project. I love these circular flutes. I just adore them. I think it's like the coolest project. They're kind of mind-blowing that these round things can be played as flutes and you can make music on them. You don't have to tune yours. If you want to just add a bell and a sound hole and then just drop some holes in randomly for finger notes, go for it. You don't have to tune these. I don't want you to feel like you need to spend a whole bunch of time tuning your flutes if you don't want to. But it is doable and hopefully I've taken some of the mystery out of how you could approach doing that. And you could also tune your flutes to whatever scale that you would want to. So that's another thing to think about. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this project. I hope that you make some flutes out there and you send me some pictures of how you choose to finish yours. So let me know how it goes, you guys. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you guys later. Thank you. Bye.